welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. ask you a question. Have you ever struggled with thoughts or feelings of rejection? Do you sometimes feel inferior to others and don't step out because of fear of failing? What would you be able to do in your life if you could overcome those fears? Today my guest and I want to share some things with you that we have learned that have helped us in our own lives. Welcome to the Concepts of Faith program, Kathy Mink. Thank you, Annette. I'm so excited to be with you today, especially studying rejection, how to get rid of it, and what it can do to your life. It's a blocker. Yes, you said some things um, recently. We, we did a, uh, a radio program together. You and your husband, Lynn, host a uh, program called The Road Show on uh, oasisnetwork.org. We'll make a plug for them. Yes. And we, you invited me to do a show with you on uh, the subject of rejection, overcoming rejection and inferiority. And I'm telling you what, we had a time. I mean, the anointing of God was in that studio and, and I just could feel and sense the power of God moving in people's lives to set them free. And um, you know, and I think a lot of times people look at me, look at you, here we are, we're on television, you travel and minister widely, and you speak the word, you're a mighty woman of faith, and we couldn't possibly even know what rejection is or, or feel inferior to anything. Oh, no, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> of course so, not. we'll just confess today that we've experienced that. And yes. Yet we're going to share some things that have helped us overcome, because it is a toxic, um, it's a toxic emotion, that feeling of rejection. It really is, and and can I tell you about one I had in the last year? <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> we want to hear about it. And he, this, uh, and pastor invited Len and I to speak at his church, and it was a. a you know, we go to all denominations right. and, and interdenominations, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So right before the service, uh, Len had done a concert the day before for the people. And then Sunday morning, he was going to sing, this is what the pastor wanted, he was going to sing a few songs, and then I was going to share the word. So I went back to the sound booth two minutes before the service started, and there was a man back there uh, that was going to run the sound. And I said something about my mic or I was sharing the word. And he said, you, women can't preach. <laughs> You're not supposed to preach or teach. That's in the Bible. <laughs> and I, it took, uh, kind of took me back. I was all ready to go. I had a great message yeah. about Psalm 103. And, but, you know, because I have been healed and put into practice some of the things we're going to share with the viewers, it didn't shake me like it would have 15 years yes. ago. Yes. And so I just kind of laughed and said, well, that was really to do with the culture back then of that day. Yes. And uh, I just went at it. Yes. And afterwards I saw him and I said, how'd I do? <laughs> and he said, you did good. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good thing I didn't let it devastate yes. me and say, Lynn, you're going to have to take it. Yes. And, you know, I've experienced that, too, because I started, I started preaching when I was 14. Wow. And back then, women really were only allowed to be missionaries and be killed in foreign countries. <laughs> and so I was, you know... It martyrs. Was, yes, we were allowed to be martyrs, but we couldn't preach the word here. But, um, yeah, I would, uh, of course, I was young also, you know, I was in my teens and I started traveling widely and preaching and going to churches and different places. And, you know, it almost never failed that after I spoke, after I ministered the word, after people were healed, set free, saved, filled with the spirit, instantly healed of, of things, 
that someone would walk up with a sour face and say, don't you know women aren't supposed to preach? You're out of the will of God. And I would just back up and just, I, I didn't know what to say. It's like God called me and so, um, a person is telling me I can't do it and I just back up. And, and it was, um, it took me time to get over that. And that's no different, you know, all women aren't called to preach, you know, but right. you do know on the inside of you who you are and who you're supposed to be. That's right. Who God created you to be. And it seems like the minute you step out to be who God's created you to be, somebody comes along and says, you're not supposed to do that. You can't do that. You'll never do that. That's right, because the devil uses people. Yes. God chose to use people and the devil always imitates God. So he chooses to speak to us through people. Through people. And they don't mean to many times. Yes. They don't mean to discourage or reject, but he has to have a voice yes. and they unwittingly uh, give him one. Now, after I was born again, I noticed this problem among women especially, men too, but you could just go to the grocery store and walk down the aisle and see people downcast, rejected looking, mm -hmm. uh, just depressed. And so I started studying. And I wanna read you some definitions of what being rejected is. All right, let's hear it. To be spurned, excluded, left out. And that starts in grade school. Mm -hmm. Uh, when they pick teams at recess and you're the last one picked, nobody wants you on their team. <laughs> and many examples like that. To be abused, it could be physical, mental, sexual, emotional, or verbal. Uh, it could be put downs, you know, words that say you're not worth anything from your parents or whoever. Or it could be anger where people around you, your husband, your uh, dad, your mom, just hit the red zone at the slightest thing and you get the brunt of it. I've got more. To be betrayed, cut off, deserted, divorced, left behind, offended, fired from a job, have failing grades, and Annette adopted. So many friends of mine that have been adopted by wonderful families, have a great life, have tried to find their birth parents, which is fine, but then been disappointed and dealt with a lot of rejection. So they felt like, number one, they were rejected because their parents didn't want them. Yes. And then secondly, after they try to find them, and are maybe successful in finding and then finding the second time they don't want them, then it's like double rejection. It's double. And that hits you right here. It hits you right in the heart. And that's what happened to you when you were getting ready to minister and that guy said, don't you know you can't preach because you're a woman? It hits you right here because that's the center of your being. It's, that's right. It's who you are. And when we had you know, you're exactly right, everything you're saying, because a lot of people experience that rejection from a job, from a person, from society. Right. From society in general. And that rejection can become the driving force in someone's life. And it's a very toxic, toxic emotion. But you know what? I remember a scripture in Isaiah 53 and it says that Jesus bore our sickness, infirmities. It says he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. Yes. Don't you think rejection and sorrow and depression is under the curse of the law? It has to be because it's so horrible. Um, I looked that up in the New Living as well, Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. And it says it's prophetic toward what Jesus would do. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. Deepest grief. Whew. That is, that, that really hits everything. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. 
yet it was not his weaknesses, but our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down, and though his troubles were thought to be a punishment from God, he was carrying them from us. Yes. And for us. Yes. So isn't that great news, though, that he yeah. carried it? That means yes. we don't have to carry it, Annette. That's right. We don't, have to, we don't have to have those feelings of being misplaced, displaced. And um, I'm trying to think of, I, I looked it up on, somebody online was talking about being depressed, you know, mm -hmm. and they said, I feel dismissed, counted as worthless, lonely, and mm -hmm. worthless. What did Jesus feel like? What, I mean, he experienced everything that we experience, and yet he came out victorious. And we just read in Isaiah 53, in the New Living Translation, that he bore our deepest griefs. Mm -hmm. Any heart pain you can imagine, any, any distress, depression, Jesus Christ bore it because it's under the curse of the law, and he redeemed us from the curse of the law. We don't have to put up with that. No, we don't. And don't you think that any grief or sorrow or depression, if you go layer upon layer upon layer, the bottom layer is rejection. Yes. Even a loved one going to be with the Lord is a feeling of rejection. I don't have them anymore. I'm totally alone. They left me behind. You know, sometimes Christians, uh, even though we know they're in heaven, we're glad for them. We get looking at ourselves and say, but why didn't they stay? Why didn't they use their faith harder to stay with me? Well, we have to face the fact that nobody's going to get a glimpse of heaven and stay with us. <laughs> well, not only that, we just don't know everything. That's right. It's, it's, it's hard for people to say, I don't know what happened. I don't know why they left. Yes. Because we don't know everything. No, we don't. We just don't know everything. So, yeah, the grief that comes from losing a loved one is, is a powerful emotion. But I know the Word of God is the answer to every toxic emotion and issue in life. The Word of God is the answer. And there's a scripture that, that I mentioned where you're talking about not being accepted by other people, not mm -hmm. being accepted uh, in groups. Maybe there's a group of people or a church or a, something you want to be accepted in and you are not accepted for whatever reason. That is no reflection upon you being worthless. No, it is That is not. no reflection. You don't know what all the reasons are. In Ephesians chapter one, in verse 6, and I got this out of the New King James Version. There's so many good versions. I just want to read them there all, really but we are. can't do it. I know it. It says um, that He has made us accepted yes. in the Beloved. That he has made he us has. accepted in the Beloved. And Strong's, I don't know if anybody knows what a Strong's Concordance is. You remember, we can get it online now, but you remember it used to be a book that was that big, that tall, and that you big. You couldn't carry it. You had to be strong <laughs> to carry the Strong's Concordance. But anyway, Strong's definition goes back to the, the Greek of that. And Strong's definition of accepted means to grace that is in due with special honor, make accepted, be highly favored. What Praise is the God. answer to rejection? What is the answer to rejection? To rejection, it is accepted and to be favored. Yes, absolutely. When you feel rejected, you don't feel like you're favored. No, you, you think you're you the like bottom you of the pile. Yeah, you have no favor. But this says that He has made us favored, accepted in the Beloved. We are filled and surrounded with every favor of God. That's right. Matter of fact, there's a scripture, and I got to preach on me here for a minute. But there's a scripture in Psalms and it says that He has surrounded us and encompassed us mm. with goodwill and favor like a shield. Mm, I love that. So that everywhere we go, 
We are taking favor with us. And so I encourage you today, if you feel rejected, start claiming the scriptures on favor. Look for the scriptures that talk about you being favored and then pray that as you go every day, favor surrounds you and bef goes before you so that before you even get there, you're favored. That's right. The Lord prepares that for you. Yes. And this Ephesians scripture that you read in that in Ephesians 1, this is so good for those that have been adopted and feel rejection from their birth parents or don't know who their birth parents are. Because look what it says in verse 5 in the King James, having predestined us unto the adoption oh, wow. <laughs> of Perfect. children by Jesus Christ to himself. So wow. you and I are adopted. Yes, we're all Everyone adopted. Everyone is adopted by, every person in the body of Christ is adopted by Jesus Christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Wow. So yeah. we're all equal. You're not adopted and other people aren't. We're all adopted. Yes. Praise and, and God. You said to his pleasure. He wanted us. Yes. We are wanted and desired by God. Yes. What a place wow. to be. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yes. That's why we're giving the knowledge today that yes. favor is yours and mine, Annette, and everyone's favor is yours not rejection, favor, God has ordained it for you. And you are adopted for his good pleasure and it's his perfect will. So you're loved so greatly and you're accepted in the beloved. Now, Annette, I learned that, the, uh, let me give some inspiration to get free. If somebody's depressed and they think, what's the use? This is great encouragement to get free because rejection brings forth more rejection. Mm -hmm. Yes, it it's, does. it's a terrible thing. It draws yeah. more because rejection I've seen manifest in two general ways. The first is the depressed, won't make eye contact, you know, obviously what we could call a rejection magnet. Yes. And that draws more rejection. People don't want to be around that. Right. And it takes a very loving, understanding person to push past that. Yes. That field of rejection. Yes. And then the other way it manifests is kind of a shock. It's the arrogant, biting remarks, know-it-all, uh, put people down. Yes. That person has deep rejection as well, and that's a cover-up. Yes. You know, I didn't realize that. You're so, you're so right about that. I, I, many years ago, I was uh, ministering, and I think I told you about this, about going to this women's meeting, and I yes, would go and minister that. all the time, and, and I would go, and, and there were all these other women ministers that would preach during the services, and we all had a good time. And then during the day when there weren't services, they would all load up and go to the mall and go shopping. Sounds and like fun. Yeah, they didn't invite me. You're kidding. So I would stay in the hotel room and I would just sit there and, and I'd just feel bad. Why does no one like me? Nobody wants to go anywhere with me. Why don't they invite me, you know? You mean the daughter of Charles Capps was yes. left out? They left me out. And I mean, it was obvious I got left out, but anyway, so after the Lord started dealing with me about these scriptures that I am accepted in Him and I don't have to be concerned what other people think about me, I thought, you know, I'm inferior. Why am I so inferior that nobody wants to go shopping with me? <laughs> Which is such a minor thing now, but it was a big thing then. And so one day the Lord just encour started encouraging me in these scriptures. And he just encouraged me to go ask. So they all got together, where are we going to go today? And they were talking. So I walked up boldly. See, I broke that cycle of feeling inferior and rejected. I yes. just broke through it. I thought, I'm going to find out once and for all what this is. And so I just walked up and I said, can I go shopping with you too? And they just Good backed you. off and backed up and looked at me. 
and said, uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, and I didn't know what that reaction was. So we went out, we went shopping. We had a great time, had such a good time, good time of fellowship, bought things. And <laughs> when we came back, one of the ladies said to me, she said, you know, we always wanted you to go with us, but we knew you were in your room praying and fasting and reading the word and that you wouldn't want to go with us. Wow. So it was a lie. Yeah. It was a lie of the devil. I wasn't being rejected. They actually were putting me in a position, you know, that you're praying for the anointing of the service. This is important. We're going to leave you alone. You and know? the devil used it two ways to make you feel rejected. And they missed out on the fun that you are, because I know you're lots of fun. And maybe even some words that needed to be spoken in that group yeah. that would help several right. people. And one of, the, one of the ladies in the group, and this is another reason I thought that I was being rejected, was because what you just said, she would come up to me and she'd say, that's not your color. <laughs> yes, just, I mean, I'd be getting ready to get up and minister and she'd say, that's not your color. Oh my word. You're wearing the wrong colors. And then she'd make other remarks about, you need to trim your hair shorter or you need to do this. And I was just horrified. I thought this, you know. Now that's straight out yes. rejection. But you know what? As it rolled around, when the truth came out, she was one of those people that was doing what you just said. And she mm -hmm. really wanted to be friends with me, but she was coming at me with all of these negative things that was pushing me further away. And I think the deeper their personal rejection is from their earlier lives, maybe childhood, maybe divorce, whatever, the more the devil is able to push them to say things like that, yes. they reject other people, they really don't even want to, yes. but it's pushed out of them, uh -huh. but we can stop it. Yes, it's, it's been taken care of, and you know what? You overcome rejection and inferiority the same way you overcome anything else in life, and it's by faith and by speaking the word. Yes. Isn't that right, Kathy? Yes, it is. And to say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm not a rejection magnet. I'm not a know-it-all. God has made me worthy. He's given me yes. His righteousness, and I declare I'm His child, accepted, yes. blessed, favored, and exalted, really, yes. to heavenly places with yes. Him. Yes, say who you are in Christ. Yes. Not who you are in the natural. We all have shortcomings in the natural. We're all uh, overcoming and gaining victory over areas. But in the realm of the spirit, we are exactly who God created us to be. That's right. We are powerful spirit beings. And the enemy has tried to lie to us and tell us we are not powerful. There are things we can't overcome. There are things that can't be done, but that is a lie because right. God is the God of possibilities. That's right. We don't have to live that way. We can live in joy and peace as soon as we know who we yes. are from this wonderful book. Yes. And we have a lot more to share on this, Annette. We're just scratching the <laughs> surface here, you know. I know. We're just getting down to it. And I found this scripture that I mentioned earlier on Psalms 5. Verse 12, it says, For you, O Lord, bless the righteous man, or woman, the one who is in right standing with you. You surround them with favor as with a shield. And the Amplified Classic Version says, Good will and favor I love as that. a shield. I love that. Look that up, you that are watching today. Psalm 512, don't, don't bypass that. It's a powerful, powerful scripture. Okay, so let's conclude this. And don't, we're going to do this the next program. We're going to continue. Yes. But God has already spoken, and His word is the answer. We are who God says we are. Yes, we are. And we can be exactly who God says we can be. We don't have to settle for anything less. No, and we're not going to, Annette. We're redeemed from the curse. Amen? Amen. <laughs> redeemed from every curse of the law. And that includes 
mental and emotional curses, and we could go into that. Now, I know there are many of you out there that are dealing with very difficult circumstances and even emotional pain. The good news is that you have been redeemed from the curse of emotional pain and can be healed in your body and emotions. I feel this so strongly that I wrote a book called Reverse the Curse in Your Body and Emotions, and I'm offering it plus a single CD that I did and recorded in a church. It's called Overcoming Inferiority and Fear of Failure. It's offered $21.80, and it's only $15 plus shipping and handling. Now, some chapter titles in this book that I wrote pretty well tell you what you need to know. The mind is the battleground. Is it ever? Wounded and broken spirits produce physical sickness. Don't expect others to heal your hurts. Mm -hmm. And then there's double curse, double cure. This book is about the healing of your body and soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. God wants you well and whole. Now, the CD entitled Overcoming Inferiority and Fear of Failure, which I taught in a church setting, it will help you break free of the lies of the enemy. You know, many Christians never fulfill their dreams because of a fear of failure and because of feelings of inferiority. They never even step out in faith for what God has for them. As for this, offer $2180. $15 for the book and the CD. That's 877-396-9400, or you can go to caps.tv. Well, this is a lot to think about, and I'm sure you might want to watch it again. So I want to encourage you to order the DVD of this three-part series that Kathy and I are doing on powerful principles for mental and emotional health. All three programs of this series that we're doing will be on this DVD. That's three programs for only $20 plus shipping and handling. Now that's a $16 discount from our regular price when ordered separately. As for offer 1805, call 877-396-9400. It's only $20 plus shipping and handling. If our phone lines are busy, please call back because we don't want to miss your call. Now next week, we will continue this three-part series and talk about how to protect your heart and set boundaries. You can become the powerful being that God created you to be. And the last program we'll be talking on how to harness the power of your thoughts. Yes. Be sure to watch. You will be blessed. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.